I decided to watch some extended highlights of the game that was over the weekend where United lost 3-0 at home to Bournemouth just to give myself a refresh so I could have some actual insightful comments to make about the match. And I'm just as angry as I was when I watched the game on Saturday. I swear to God. Maybe one of our most... It wasn't a surprise result, but the performance still kind of caught me off guard. I think some of our fans got way too giddy about how we, you know, put aside Chelsea in the previous game. But now, having seen how Chelsea have performed and having seen how we have performed since then, it's clear to see that Chelsea are in far dire straits than we are. They're absolutely terrible. They're going through a really bad time. So when we beat Chelsea, it was less to do with us being amazing and Chelsea just being really, really bad because Bournemouth humbled us in a way that I've not seen in a long time. And it wasn't like they humbled us because they have far superior players than us. They don't. Right? I don't think any United fan, even myself, the most cynical of United fans, could sit here and say there are many Bournemouth players that I would swap for our players. But what they do have is a collective mentality. They have a style of play. They have players who are ready to die and commit and, you know, and really run their socks off for the badge. They have a manager who has a real handle on these players and who does what and what does what, whatever it may be. And they play a really, really attractive brand of football. If anything, one thing I noticed in the game, if you actually look through the stats, I've got the stats here on the Google, and it actually says here, which is weird, if you watch the game, it didn't feel like that. But the stats here say that we had 20 shots to Bournemouth's 10. Now, I will tell you here with a straight face that I think the 3-0 scoreline flattered us. I think Bournemouth should have won by five, easy. They should have won by five. And the fact that they didn't win by five was more to do with their maybe poor finishing and maybe our, our ability to maybe, you know, be lucky with some of the fucking goalkeeping decisions, whatever it may be, or offside calls, than it was to them actually not being dominated the game. They actually dominated the majority of the game. That's why sometimes you have to really take a, a closer look at statistics because they never told the full story because on the statistics side of things it says that we had 20 shots they had 10 we had three shots on target they had four but even just that that statistic which i just read if they had only four shots on target but they scored from three that shows you that they were playing at a far more efficient level than us and it's something that i kind of saw that i thought was really smart about bournemouth i felt as if they lulled us into a false sense of security they had a very interesting way of playing. Instead of trying to dominate the possession and have control of the game, they tried to lull us into a false sense of security. They immediately started the game, or we started the game at home, which is very strange, with no control. It felt like a basketball game from minute zero, which I always hate. I feel like when we're at home, we should always have control of the game. We should always be imposing our style of play um, against the opposition. It's our home. It's our fortress. That's where, you know, you're kind of, you know, your bread is buttered so, so, without, you know, for lack of a better term. But we didn't do that. It immediately turned into a basketball game. And then, you know, Bournemouth took advantage of that and scored um, by kind of, if I'm not mistaken, nicking the ball off us from the right-hand side, playing a really good ball in the middle, and then bang, Dominic Solanke kind of slots it in. We made Dominic Solanke, again, he's been on a good run, but, you know, he's not a world beater. But we made Dominic Solanke look like fucking Nicholas Anelka. He was terrorising us. He probably should have had a hat-trick if he really was on his game. He actually, you know, his finishes were very, very well. He finished very well, to be honest, and he was always a constant threat. He gave Maguire an absolute horrible time, which is, again, evidence of Maguire's maybe, you know, play of the month flipping award being a little bit, a little bit premature. Maguire might be good in terms of the battle and the fucking, he loves a good aggressive one-on-one -on -one battle with the striker. But when it comes to someone like Douglas Solanke, he's, he, he wants to get physical. He can stick tight. He can also run behind. He can receive the ball up to feet in the air. He's kind of a well-rounded striker in that regard. Then Maguire had no answers for him whatsoever. So it really did put into perspective just how far Maguire is from the top level and the fact that we still need to move on from him regardless of how much he's done well over the last few months and stuff coming back into the team and cementing his place and keeping from run out when it comes to the top level quality he really isn't it but again it's not about individuals when it comes to this game I reckon like I said before we definitely should have lost by way more goals I was surprised that we didn't we didn't really you know really I felt like have a real grip or control in the game if there are one slight probably positives to take from this I would say maybe Arabat's performance i thought amrabat that might have been um amrabat's best game for united in a long time um but i still think you know 
Eric Ten Hag basically fucked him with the tactics because essentially, even though it looks like on the lineup here via Google that we played a f- a four a four two three one, we actually played a four one uh two three one, right? So there's only one defensive um d- defensive playmaker playing there at the back. When I when I think most people, myself included, would say, you know, considering the injuries you have in defense and considering how open we are, we probably need to have two double pivots here. We probably need to have two dms playing in that position maybe one dm can be a little bit more progressive um but you can't have just amrabat or whoever it may be playing that role all by themselves because they end up having to do the job of two people and when it comes to the tactics and the formation this is one thing that's really making me struggle in terms of having patience with eric ten Hag because i look at this lineup and i'm saying to myself obviously the lineup isn't great fair enough but there's some players here who are on good form like mctominay but he's clearly not a good midfielder we all know this we know he's not the level that united need to really go anywhere he's probably not on a level even to play with the premier league you're probably lucky to get into the fucking crystal palace team he's pretty shit on the ball but one thing he does really well is finish He's really good in the box, as he's shown in recent weeks. I think he's he, he might even be our top scorer this season. I'm not really too sure. But he finishes really well. So why not play McTominay further up the pitch? Or maybe play him alongside Martial? Why not as a fucking second striker? And then play Bruno Fernandes a bit deep in that position so that he can maybe spray balls from that angle, but also offer protection in the back. That might be a better way to go about it, but we didn't. Instead, we have McTominay playing really far ahead. We have Bruno moving around where he wanted to move around. So essentially, he always left Amrabat in that position by himself. So whenever um, Bournemouth did attack us on a transition and they did kind of, you know, nip in and cut balls out, which they did really well. There was a few times, I think they, a few of their plays, basically, I felt like they were targeting McTominay because they knew his first touch wasn't great. So a few Bournemouth players would nip in in front of McTominay get the ball and whenever they got got the ball past McTominay they effectively bypassed our entire attack and they headed straight to the defense so there's only one line of defense left for them to kind of penetrate which is why they probably were able to get to our goal so quickly so it was a really weird um performance very strange lineup and form and tactics from the manager but Considering how we've been this season, it wasn't that surprising. I think one thing that's been a consistency, uh, what's been a consistent theme with United this season is our level of inconsistency. Just when there's pressure mounting on a manager, people want the manager to be gone, people are spitting feathers about the players, the players seem to kind of pull it out of the bag and get a result to kind of stem the pressure, to get the pressure off their back, sorry, and kind of let people leave them alone. And the same thing happened against Chelsea. Then we go, you know, playing at home against Bournemouth, fans get giddy. And then, of course, the players end up reverting back to form and being utterly inconsistent once again. So I'm not going to be surprised if at the game against Bayern Munich later on tonight, most likely we might end up getting a good result. Now, this it's unlikely we're going to qualify anyway for the next round of the Champions League. I don't want us to qualify. Personally, if it was me, I feel like the players, the club, the manager don't re- don't deserve to be in that competition. They don't deserve to deserve, deserve sorry to get rewarded in that way. And I also think you know there's no point of being in those type of competitions if you're not going to win it. We have no chance of winning the Champions League anyway. So why bother trying to be in it? I'd much rather we get knocked out. But I wouldn't be surprised if these absolute dickheads of players decide to pull it out of the bag and pull in the performance especially off the back of Bayern Munich losing I think 5-1 to Eintracht Frankfurt the other day which I watched the game here and there I had it on the stream and I did see the game and it wasn't a 5-1 game to be honest um Bayern Munich did miss a lot of chances so I'm not really too sure if that was a good illustration of their level of performances so I don't think that 5-1 is really illustrative of the control that by Leverkusen or sorry um, that Frankfurt had on the game overall but we're going to wait to see what happens later on but Bournemouth deserved to win we'll give them full credit the tactics from their manager was spot on they're on a good run of form all their players know exactly what they're doing. They took advantage. Um, they were able to bloody, you know, target some of our players who aren't the greatest on the ball. Um, there were some instances, especially with Luke Shaw, I think that led to maybe the second goal from Billing, where he gave the ball away. And then at the end, he ends up getting bullied at the back post with the header. So a lot of our players got run ragged and got knocked to left to right and centre. And if anything, it just made us question more what our long-term prospects are under the current ownership of the Glazers and also under the stewardship of Eric Ten Hag because a part of me feels like as much as I know this result isn't a direct result of just Eric Ten Hag alone and isn't the fault of just the players alone, it's systemic of the whole structure of the club. 
there still needs to be some consequences. There has to be consequences for winning against Chelsea and then turning in a performance where you lose three 0 at home to fucking Bournemouth. There has to be consequences for it. And I feel like consequences for that is that Ericsson Howe's job should be under pressure. He shouldn't feel like, oh, because the owners aren't great, I'm going to be here regardless because the players are more toxic. No, the players are more toxic. The owners are terrible. But the manager that we have now is pretty average too. I think all three things can be correct. And if anything, for me, the really disappointing thing about Ericsson Hag has been that I feel like he's been the greatest managerial catfish of all time. Um, he, he came in with this, you know, we a lot of us, myself included fans, saw the way Ajax played. And I think a lot of us felt like, oh, if we're not going to win things, at least we're going to play good football. At least we're going to have, you know, interest. You know, we're going to have exciting games. We're going to play fast, fluid, attacking football. We're going to have control of the ball. We're going to have all these patterns of play, these triangles. We're going to develop players, blah, 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 whatever it may be. We're going to change the profile of the whole squad. But instead, what he ended up doing is reverting to type. He ended up, you know, with a very dodgy and patchy transfer um, history. And just in general, the style of play that we have now at the moment, which is meant to be long ball, isn't really long ball isn't really attractive and isn't really getting us the results that we need so we don't play good football on the ice we're not entertaining to watch we're not going to win anything anytime soon and we have probably one of the worst set of players to ever try and get behind in the history of United in a long long time a lot of those players I absolutely detest and hate if it was up to me I'd get rid of maybe 10 of the first teamers that started um, the game against Bournemouth legit plus whoever else is on the bench I want a complete overhaul and a restart um, and, and it, you know, it includes all the favourites, like the fucking Bruno Fernandes of all this, like the Maguires, the Shaws, the, Ant the Anthony Martials. I want all of those players gone and I want a complete restart, but that's not going to happen anytime soon. So the only thing we can kind of hope for is that we go on a horrible run where we consistently lose matches and maybe the pressure then will be, you know, something that the owners can't ignore and they'll have to fucking get the partial ownership with Sergeant Ratcliffe done, so, you know, sooner rather than later which again we have no confirmation on that either so another horrible performance from us i'm not really looking forward to the Bayern munich game later tonight but i wouldn't be surprised if these fucking shit stain players end up um pulling it out of the bag and putting in a good performance and winning even though it's not in our hands really i think if i'm not mistaken even if we beat Bayern munich we still have to hope the other teams in our group draw which is you know whatever um so you know, it, it's not likely that we're going to win because we have to win our game and hope another result goes for us so it's not in our control. I don't want us to go through the Champions League anyway. I don't want us to be in the Europa League. I want us out of all European competitions. I want the coach to focus on coaching us during the week if, if that's possible. And I want all the pressure to be back on the players again for getting us knocked out. But... The manager does need to go in one way, shape or form. Even if the new owners come in, the manager does need to go. He is not a good manager. He is not of the level that we need. And the style of play that we have at the moment, the profile of the players, the tactics, the substitutions, which are fucking annoying, everything about the team, it just pisses me off. So I'd much rather have a clean overhaul, players, managers, everybody gone and then start again. But most likely that's not going to happen anytime soon. That's not going to happen anytime soon.